Let's review on topic 1.8 rational functions and zeros. So we need to find the zeros of the following functions. Um, in a way, it looks pretty straightforward that zeros means what? I want to make this zero, right? So I want x plus 3, x minus 2 over x minus 1, x plus 2, x plus 5 to be zero. I just have to make sure that I follow two conditions. Obviously, the first one is if you want to make the zero, you want to set the numerator to zero. So x plus 3 x minus 2 should be equal to 0. But at the same time, these should not be 0. I have to make sure that these, uh, the expression at the bottom should not be 0 at the points that I get from the green one. What I want to say is, and you will understand this in question 3, uh, what I want to say is, let's say from green one, I'm getting x plus 3 uh, times x minus 2 is 0, which means that obviously x is negative 3. And from here, x minus 2 is 0, which means that x is 2. Now, is negative 3 making the 0? No. Is 2 making the 0? No. So, I'm uh, sorry, I should have placed not equal to. Uh, obviously, both are not making it 0, so both are allowed. The answers are negative 3 and 2. Likewise, over here, uh, where is the top 0? The top is 0 when x squared is 0, which means that x is 0. And if I put x equal to 0 in the bottom, I don't think that's 0, right? That's actually negative 2. So 0 is perfectly fine. It's allowed. There is no restriction. However, in this question, as soon as you set the numerator to 0, you will get two solutions. One is x equal to 3 and one is x equal to 6. But x equal to 6 is not allowed because 6 minus 6 will make the denominator 0, which is not allowed. So 6 is rejected. Only 3 is allowed because at 3, it is definitely making the denominator not equal to 0. Uh, likewise, over here, I think we need to factorize this, right? So let's try to factorize hx. Uh, this will be x minus 5, I think, x minus 5, and then x plus 4 uh, over here. And this will be x plus 5 and x minus 4 at the bottom. So uh, uh, the numerator is 0 only when x is equal to uh, x minus 5 is 0 and x plus 4 is equal to 0, which means that x is equal to 5 and x is equal to minus 4. Um, and obviously, 5 is also not making the 0, minus 4 is not also not making the denominator 0. So this is the answer for question number 4. For question number five, I think the numerator looks like a difference of perfect square. So I'm going to rewrite this as x minus 3, x plus 3. And the bottom can be easily factorized as x minus 5, x plus 3, if I'm not wrong. And the numerator is 0 at uh, x equal to 3 and x equal to minus 3. However, minus 3 is not allowed because the moment I will put minus 3 at the bottom, this will become 0, which is definitely not allowed. So the answer is only x equal to 3. And the last one says that x, oh, cubic, okay. I'll take x as a common factor. So I'm left with x square minus 4x minus 32. And to factorize this, I will make a cross here. Uh, negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. And the b value is 7. So 7 is right here. Uh, the two factors of negative 8 such that it adds up to give 7 are 8 and negative 1. Uh, and yes, yeah, 8 and negative 1 works. So I'm going to split the middle term as 8x minus x. And minus 4 remains as it is. Uh, x square minus 4x minus 32 is very easy to factor. It's just x minus 8x plus 4. And at the bottom, I will take 2x as a common factor from here. Uh, and I'm left with x plus 4. And then I'll take minus 1 as a common factor and I'm left with x plus 4 again. Uh, so from here, I will have x times x minus 8 times x plus 4 as it is. And here, x plus 4 is taken as a common factor and I'm left with 2x minus 1. Right. Clearly, only these two are allowed, right? Because if I make this as 0, x is minus 4, this 
it will also become zero which is definitely not allowed so the answers the zeros are x equal to zero from here and x equal to eight from here so these are the two answers here the graph of several rational functions are given to us and we need to solve for this using graph fx is greater than zero pretty straightforward greater than zero means uh, the portion which is above the x-axis and above the x-axis is this portion and this portion remember we are only looking for x values so x values are obviously going from negative infinity to one sorry negative one negative one not included because fx is only greater than zero not greater than equal to zero and then union uh, it's going all the way from this point which is a vertical asymptote of course so i'm going to take zero but zero is not included like i said it's a vertical asymptote and it's going all the way to the right side which is going x is going to infinity over here i hope you are not confused by um, seeing that this stops at one it does but that is a y value I'm looking for x values, I'm solving for x, right? And x is going all the way. Over here, less than equal to zero would, uh, would be this, including the point where it is becoming zero, which is at one, of course. So uh, this value of x starts from negative one, clearly. Uh, negative one is not included because that's a vertical asymptote and it's going all the way to one, while one is definitely included because this is less than equal to zero. And the last one says that uh, hx is greater than or equal to zero. So greater than or equal to zero is this portion, uh, this portion, and this entire portion. This is where it is positive. So it will be from negative infinity to negative uh, two, right? Negative two, negative two included because this is negative two. Union. Uh, it's going all the way from 1, while 1 is a vertical asymptote, so it cannot be included, uh, to 0, and 0 is a 0, so yeah, it is included because this is greater than or equal to 0. Uh, union, once again, we have a vertical asymptote 1, so it starts all the way from 1 and goes to the right, which is going to infinity, which is right here, so that's the answer. Okay, now we have to solve this algebraically, uh, solve the following inequalities, write your answer in the interval notation. So if you remember, if you've seen the videos on solving polynomial inequalities, it's basically the same thing, exact same approach. Uh, what you start with is first you find the zeros or, or the roots of the individual factors. The roots of the individual factors will be when this is equated to zero and this is equated to zero. So this is negative two and this is one. That's step number one. Step number two is you make a number line and you plot these points on the number line, which uh, will look like negative two and one here. And step three is you test the areas. So for example, let's take any number greater than one, maybe 100. So if you put 100 here, this will be positive. Any number between negative two and one, maybe zero. If you put zero, then it will it will become two over negative one, which is negative. Any number less than negative two will be negative hundred, which is negative over negative, which is positive. And then that's it. We need where it is negative, so it is negative here which is negative two to one. Of course, the terminal points are not included because I'm not really interested to make it zero. It's just less than zero. So that's the answer. Let's try this one. Same concept, I'll make a number line. Uh, I think I can do a mental math and find the zeros. So negative five and three are the numbers that I get. Any number greater than three, maybe 100. So 100 will make this positive. Uh, in between this, let's say zero, zero will make this negative and then this will, okay, and make it positive because if you put negative 100, both are negative. So if, if you want to make it positive, it will be from negative infinity to negative five, union three to infinity. That's where it becomes greater than zero. Here we have to make it, uh, okay, the first thing is, uh, uh, in this case is I want to make get rid of that negative because if you remember in polynomials as well we used to follow that uh, if the if there's a negative on the left side negative leading term then you have to make it positive so let's multiply by negative sign both the sides so that the inequality flips 
And now we can make a number line, plot one here. Any number greater than one, maybe 100, will make this positive. This will make it negative. Now I want less than equal to zero. So it's very tempting to say that the answer is negative infinity to one and one is brackets. But no, although one looks like a zero, but look at that, what uh, it's not making that numerator zero, it's actually making the denominator as the zero, right? Which is not allowed. I cannot really allow denominator to be zero. So it will still be in parentheses. I hope you understand. Uh, let's try this one. So uh, make a number line, zero and four are the numbers. Any number greater than four, maybe 100. I'm not really bothered about this one because this is always positive. It's a square, so I'll just check this one. So x is x uh, for x greater for x greater than four. It is positive between zero and four. Also, it's positive. Here, it is negative. It has to be negative. So answer is negative infinity to zero. That's the answer where it is negative. All right. We're here. Rinse and repeat. I'm I'm gonna make a number line here. Uh, this number line will have zeros as negative six, negative two, and one. Anything greater than one, if you plug in, maybe 100, that's gonna make it positive. And if you remember, I earlier told you a shortcut as well in the polynomials, that if all the powers are odd, just just uh, 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 switch the signs. The signs will toggle. So plus, minus, plus, minus, right? Uh, it wants less than equal to zero, so negative infinity, infinity to negative six. Can I allow negative six? Yes, because it's only making top as zero, so allowed. And then negative two to one, can I allow negative two? No, because it is making denominator zero, which is not allowed. Uh, but can I include one? Yes, because it is making numerator as zero. Uh, likewise, over here, we have number line, uh, the roots are negative 4, 0, and 3 over 2. You understand, right? 0 from here, 3 over 2 root from here, and negative 4 from here by equating it these factors to 0. Uh, I'm not really worried about x square because it is always positive. So I'll just check the signs of the top two. Any number greater than 3 over 2, maybe 100. So it's positive, positive, so positive. Any number between 0 and 3 over 2, maybe 1. I think it will become negative positive, so negative. Any number between negative four and zero, maybe negative one, so it's still negative, negative positive, so negative. Any number less than negative, negative four, maybe negative hundred, so double negative, which is positive. So it will become negative infinity. I want greater than or equal to zero, negative infinity to negative four. Negative four is included because it is at the top. Union. 3 over 2 to infinity because 3 over 2 is again at the top and it's definitely included in the 0. Okay, here we need to factorize the top, I think. So it can look like x minus 3x plus 3 over x plus 2 is greater than 0. Fortunately, everything is odd, so I just have to plot the roots negative 3, negative 2, and 2. Find the most right. Let's put 100, so that's going to be positive, and then just alternate the signs. So plus, minus, plus, minus over here. They need greater than 0, no confusion, greater than 0, just as open interval on all sides, negative infinity, sorry, negative 3 to negative 2 union, 2 to infinity. That's where this is positive. Right, and this one, I think this can be factored very easily, x minus 5, x plus 2. 2 if I'm not wrong, over x plus 8 should be negative. So I make a number line over here. Uh, this will be negative 8. This will be negative 2, I think. This will be 5. Uh, put any number less, greater than 5, maybe 100. So that's positive, negative, positive, and negative. So it's negative, in, negative infinity to negative 8, union negative 2 to 5. Right. Finally, we have these questions. So once again, x square minus 6x plus 9. That's pretty interesting because it is x minus 3, x minus 3 over x square plus 1 is greater than 0. 
which means that x minus 3 whole square over x square plus 1 is greater than 0. Now, look at this question carefully. Can x square plus 1 ever be negative? No, because uh, x square is always positive or maybe 0. And a positive or 0 when added with 1, it's again a positive number. So, it is always positive. This is positive. And can a perfect square be negative? No, it can be either 0 or positive. Because when x is 3, it is 0. And when x is not 3, it is a positive number because it is perfect square. So, can the ratio of these two be negative? Not really. It will always be, um, it will always be, always be either positive or 0. So, don't you think just by this analysis, obviously I will show you the customary method as well. But from this analysis, we can say that all the values of x are included except 3 because 3 will make this 0 and 0 is not allowed, right? But of course, the customary method will suggest that I make a number line and in that number line, I will plot 3 as the only root. Anything greater than 3 will make it positive because, you know, everything is square here and anything less than 3, maybe 0 will also keep it positive. And 3 is not allowed because it will make it 0. So, that way is also the answer is negative infinity to 3 union 3 to infinity because at 3 we have to break it up. Like I said, 0 is not allowed. Right. Finally, we have this one. So, uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm going to make uh, uh, x here. Uh, <coughs> Eight, negative 8 times 3 is negative 24. This is negative 2. Uh, this is negative 6 and 4. 6 times 4 is 24. So, negative 6 and 4 are the, uh, are the, uh, uh, are the roots. So, this will be 3x square minus 6x plus 4x minus 8 over x plus 1 is less than or equal to 0. So, if I take 3x out as a common factor, I'm left with x minus 2. And if I take 4 as a common factor, I'm left with x minus 2 over x plus 1 is less than or equal to 0. Uh, if I take x minus 2 as a common factor, I'm left with x minus 2. 3x plus 4 over x plus 1 should be less than or equal to 0. Okay, I'm going to make a number line here. So, um, okay, need some more space. Let me try to make some space. Okay, so um, uh, let's plot a number line. I think the roots over here are negative 4 over 3, negative 1, which is somewhere here, and 2, which is somewhere here. Fortunately, all the powers are odd. And put any number greater than 2, maybe 100. So all this will be positive, and then negative, and then positive, and then negative. We alternate. Uh, we need less than equal to 0. So, less than 0 is definitely negative infin infinity to negative 4 over 3. And negative 4 over 3 is included because that will make it 0. It's on the top. Uh, union, uh, negative 1 and 2. Negative 1 is not included because it is at the bottom. Uh, so, parentheses and 2 is included because it is at the top. So, it will make indeed 0. So, less than equal to 0, these values are allowed. So, this is the final answer.